Yes, indeed, it's uh, Sunrise Daily. We're coming to you live from Abuja, venue of the World Pension Summit. Well, it's the World Pension Summit special, actually. Uh, we're joined now by the uh, Acting Director General of PENCOM, Chinelo Anloho Amazu. Morning, I thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning. Thanks very much. You know, when you hear pension, people ask because what they're well, maybe a lot of them here in the papers or read uh, a big part in the papers, not exactly too pleasant. But yes, we do know that the Pension Act has been signed into law by the President only recently, which should change a lot of things. But what is the essence of this Pension Summit? Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be here this morning. I, um, essentially, the Pension Summit, uh, the World Pension Summit Africa Special, is um, an avenue to get people talking, pension professionals talking about the future. The theme of the summit is shaping the future, and that is shaping the future of the pen, uh, pension industry in the next decade. What you have just said in your opening speech has to deal with how pensions were perceived in the past. And that is what the reform was about, to change all of that and make sure that people own their pensions and that by contributing and setting aside for their uh, retirement uh, benefits. The summit, it's to bring people together. This is the first in kind in Africa. The World Pension Summit has been going on in Amsterdam for the past, but this is the first time they've come to the African continent. And part of the reason is in recognition of Nigeria's growing importance in the utilization of pension funds for the larger economy. So what you see is a change from the reliance on the old defined um, uh, uh, benefit system to a pay-as-you-go where people contribute while they work so that they can earn their retirement benefits when they retire. Yeah, so in Nigeria, we understand that at some point, this money is were locked down. When we started the contributory uh, pension fund, it was locked down so that, you know, the monies couldn't be invested. Uh, but now it seems it's beginning to open up. What are some of the challenges that you see ahead of, you know, this particular opening up? Well, actually, the funds have never been locked down. Mm -hmm. What it is is that there's an exceedingly... Um, uh, focus on the regulation of the utilization of the funds. Apart from being the, uh, it's not the normal funds that you invest in, these are retirement benefits, and their primary objective is to be available for the retiree when he retires. So any investment that was be done with the funds, we will have to have that as their primary objective, and it's shrouded around the safety of it. Well, the past decade, what it has been is that the accumulation has been taking place, and a lot of the regulations around that have to do with even getting people to get into the culture of saving for their own future. Now, with the new signing of the Pension Reform Act 2014, what it is, apart from uh, allowing a little bit more, uh, it's strengthening PENCOM's regulatory powers over the pursuit of those investments because uh, we cannot re-emphasize that our primary concern is the safety of the pension funds. So the, it hasn't been locked down. The um, contributions have actually been increased from the, what it was in the 2004. So it's, uh, of course there have then been a lot more funds available for investment. Perhaps from the perspective of a regulator, you might not see it as being locked down, but perhaps from, you know, from those who administer the PFAs might see it that way because when you have heavy restrictions on what you can and cannot do, uh, we want to believe that that's one of the reasons why you're hosting the summit. Uh, what we can do, what more can be done with pension funds in a very safe way, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, uh, thanks very much for that comment because that is actually the crux of the, a lot of the misconceptions that's been going around around the pension funds mm -hmm. because all of a sudden we have accumulated to 4.2 trillion and everybody is I mean, uh, understandably mm -hmm. wondering how this can be utilized. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not the regulations that change. What we're looking to sift out of this summit is innovative ways to invest these funds in line with the regulations. There will be the 2014 Act will also allow a little bit of um, uh, leeway, but primarily what we need is 
to get people talking about safe and innovative ways to invest this pension fund. So in line with the regulations as it is, because at no point will the regulator lose sight of its regulatory framework. What it is is that we are trying to get people to think out of the box. How do we utilize these funds in line with the existing regulations? And it can be done. And part of the key uh, outcomes of this summit is to say how we can develop safe, responsible instruments that can deliver the benefits of this reform to each and every contributor and the retiree at large. You know, in order to get people talking about it, mm -hmm. they have to be aware first. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about awareness of pensions, the contributory scheme, in terms of not just from the employers now, the employees as well. Are Absolutely. Aware of this? Well, they are becoming increasingly aware. Well, Nigeria is a large country, and um, uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned that because that is part of the next uh, uh, focus of PENCOM in the coming uh, couple of years. We set back in the past decade developing appropriate structures. What we will now focus a lot more than normal because this uh, structures are in place. They've been in place for the past uh, eight years and they're working. So what we're moving now is to synthesize even more of the general public of uh, the need for them to take their future into their hands and save for their retirement. We have uh, nearly six million retirement savings account and um, the population, the working population is about 50 million. Yeah, so, you understand, yeah, so you understand clearly the level of work we have to, because essentially this is an employee's law. It is to their benefit that they own their future and take seize control and not be dependent on the largesse of their employer, be it the private sector or the government, to fund their retirement benefits. Mm. Yeah, if you look at it, it looks like uh, something that is so complex, uh, complex institutions that we're talking about uh, pensions, because going from where children stopped it, a lot of information needs to, to be out there for the people, your retirement age, what uh, form of contribution you need to put into that savings scheme, and how well you can get to enjoy it, knowing full well that uh, some have seen bad times in Nigeria to the extent that they're not too sure of what this is about. Uh, how guaranteed can this be when the man or woman finally uh, takes a bow uh, out of service? So how well have you been able to sensitize them as to their retirement ages and contribution and how much some of them can actually put in that. Thanks very much. And if uh, also uh, hit on the, it's not a finite process. It's an ongoing thing and will happen throughout the life of the pension reform because you have uh, two stages. Create coming from the skepticism and uh, sheer dread. When you mention the word pension, they think, oh, they want to take my money or I don't get it. So the past 10 decades, it has been to show them, not by words, but by action, your f funds are safe. They are yours, you own it. You get regular accounts. You, have, you can question your PFAs, and if you're not satisfied, you send your report to the regulator. That's one aspect of synthesization, to even get on the scheme. And now you get on the scheme. There's this aspect of the synthesizing and creating awareness that the law has just prescribed a minimum. You could do more. And you can make sure that every extra funds you have, instead of uh, spending it on anything that you would want, you can save for the future. That is the, th the third part, is then your retirement stage. What is it that I can choose? You have, do I take a program withdrawal? Do I take an annuity? It is constant uh, sensitization. And it's just not um, uh, focusing on the pension system. I think it's more of a general financial literacy issue, and the CBN has taking up um, uh, the lead in bringing all financial regulators together so they can have a concerted, cohesive approach to financial literacy education because it spans around the entire financial industry. People don't really understand what it's about. And our job is to go to schools, go to uh, offices, go to individual places to teach them so that they can then make informed choices. Mm. Six million out of 50 million working population. We're also looking at a growing youth population. Uh, Africa, one of the resources exactly we have on the continent is our youth population. And we're looking at that youth population eventually retiring. Do you see any peculiar problems for us 
We've seen the experiences of what happened uh, in Western countries and how many of them have been asked to work longer so that the government can afford to pay them their pensions because the money's just not ready. Do you see that experience you know, coming in here? You know, that's the beauty of the system because it's fully funded mm -hmm. from day one. And actually, I think we can utilize this, our growing youth population, because the truth is that the younger they are, the more they save till their, they can't save till their retirement. A lot of young people nowadays, when you say pension, they think that has nothing to do with me. I'm not getting old yet. But the beauty of the contributory scheme is that you start from day one to contribute towards your future. And those are probably the ones that will get the greatest benefit out of this system because they would have contributed for longer. Their funds are invested for longer. So at the end of the day, they will then have a lot more to go, which is where the regulator comes in. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what we're using these this funds to do in terms of investment, uh, the regulator has to keep eye on the primary focus, make those funds available to the uh, retiree as and when due. But if we're doing six million within a span of say a decade, how soon do you think we can cover 15 million? That's about, let's say, uh, conservatively we're looking at 44 million more people in how many years and how long, I mean, how much would I have taken in terms of when they would have been contributing to the pension fund or their own pension fund? You know, the decade that has passed yes. was also the decade that set up PENCOM as an institution. It didn't exist before 2004. Mm -hmm. It's also the decade that set up the pension fund uh, administrators. They didn't exist at the time. The pension fund custodians, the regulations. So a lot of that decade has been focused on setting up the structures that will then attract the remaining 44 million. What I don't think is that it's a problem. The big issue has been the setting up the, the structure and setting out regulations that are useful to the investors and also protective of the pension funds. In the next decade, what we are focusing on is more coverage, that is the remaining 44 million, and then more useful investments prudentially uh, regulated for the contributor.